Now let me share screen. Great. Uh, so, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, good. So uh, today we are uh, continuing about the shortest path algorithm. We already talked about uh, uh, two algorithms, Floyd Varshall, which was for the all pair shortest path that we talked about. It. This was this uh, three loops inside and the running time was n to the three. And it was important in this algorithm, uh, you could actually uh, hear, uh, you don't need to have the uh, non-negativity on the edges. So uh, here, I mean, these are, this, can, this algorithm works even for uh, negative edges, Floyd Warshall, because the, the, the algorithm works fine, but you should not have a negative cycle. We also talk about the Jexter algorithm for single source, uh, that in which uh, actually you need to have this assumption that the edges should be non-negative. That was important. Another important that another algorithm that we are using, uh, and we mentioned that that actually the algorithm has applications for uh, Google Maps, etc. And here we are talking about uh, another algorithm, uh, which also it is very important, especially for routers. Like this, when you send an email from one place to another, or you are seeing videos, etc., all of them are using some routers uh, that are there. And the algorithm that they are using is actually based on some Bellman force. So when you send any packet from one place to another place on the internet, generally actually uses some ideas from the Bellman force algorithm that we are uh, talking here. So that's another very fundamental algorithm for all pair shortest paths. And it has some properties, especially it works if the edges are negative. Uh, it works as long as the graph does not have negative cycle. And actually, this is an algorithm that if there is a, a negative cycle in the graph, it can detect it as well. Uh, good. So uh, uh, good. So uh, this algorithm is good if there is no edge of negative uh, lengths in the graph. Uh, I mean, the digester algorithm as we discussed. But here, the Bellman Ford algorithm actually uh, works as long as there is no negative cycle in the graph. So as long as there is no negative cycle, uh, so what is a negative cycle? A cycle whose edges uh, sum to a negative value. Uh, so this is, for example, is a negative cycle in the graph. So maybe you have uh, these three things and then you have minus two, minus one, and say two. In this case, the sum of the edges of this cycle would be minus one. And this would be a negative cycle. So uh, as long as this graph does not have a negative a graph does not have a negative cycle. And note that the negative cycle is a problematic case because if you are starting from a S vertex S, you want to go to a vertex T, then the concept of shortest path does not mean that much because as long as you will reach to this vertex, to this cycle, and then in this cycle, it can be, I mean, we can say it is a directed event. Uh, then in that case, actually, then uh, the concept of negative cycle does not mean any, like the shortest path does not mean anything because you can come here and then you can go forever here and you just become negative more, more and more negative. So in some sense, the shortest path between S and T would be minus infinity. That's the reason that negative cycle is not good actually for shortest path. Uh, and uh, so as long as there is no such cycle, this algorithm actually finds. So what is the algorithm? The algorithm is very simple. So uh, again, so assume that uh, this is a single source. So we are uh, assuming that we want to find the shortest path from a vertex V here to all other vertices in the graph. So from, uh, from V to, mm, let me just uh, is this one. Yes, so here, this is a graph that we have, and this is a vertex V, and we are we want to find the shortest path from V to everyone else. Uh, so this is the shortest path. And so here, SP of V would be equal to, SP of V is equal to zero. Uh, 
because the shortest path from V to V is zero. And here, SP of W for any other vertex, which is not, uh, not equal to uh, V, SP of any vertex else would be infinite at the beginning. Now, what do we do? This is a simple loop. For I equal to one to V minus one. We are doing this one V minus one. Uh, uh, for each edge in the graph, for each edge in the graph that we are seeing that, so this is the edge uh, UW, and we are relaxing this edge. What's the meaning of that? It means that if we are using this edge, so we have some estimate again for SP of, uh, so this is the essentially the assumption that we have. So if uh, we have some estimate for shortest path to W currently, as I mentioned at the beginning it is infinity except for uh, V which is uh, zero. So uh, as long as uh, there is a, a vertex uh, U and W, uh, so uh, for each UW belongs to E, we are relaxing this uh, UW. Uh, Again, what's the meaning of that? It means that the estimate that we have it for W, SP of W. If you are using the, if we can use the estimate of U, the shortest path to U, and then use this edge, and we get a, a less uh, amount for the shortest path, then we just update it. So it means that essentially, if you use through the, via the shortest path of U, and then continue to W, that would be shorter, it would be a shorter path than, going directly to W, we are doing that. So we will be, uh, have SP of W equal to SP of U plus length of U. So that's a very simple algorithm. So we, uh, what do we do? So again, uh, for each, uh, all of this vertex, like I equal to one to size of V minus one, for each edge, we are relaxing this edge. Uh, this edge, it means that again, if using this edge, we can get a better shortest path, we will do that. And uh, clearly, the running time of this algorithm would be order v times e. Why? Because they have order v here and order e here. And everything else here is order 1. So the running time would be order v uh, times e. Uh, and this is uh, worse than, uh, so this is uh, worse than a Dijkstra's order v plus e times log v that we had it. So there we had essentially v plus e. Here we have, uh, by v I mean size of v. Uh, size of v times size of e. So we have times here versus plus there. But there are some good algorithms here. For example, it works also for the negative cycles that does not work, that uh, negative edges that the Jekyll algorithm does not it. So let me just say why this algorithm works. Then. Is the algorithm clear? Okay. So uh, the proof of this algorithm actually is uh, this is the proof is by induction. Uh, so let me just bring this algorithm. Okay. So uh, what is the uh, proof? The proof is, is actually. Uh, uh, relatively simple. So this is the induction hypothesis. Uh, it says that uh, if there is a path from V to U, so this is V is the one the origin, to U with at most I edges, so the number of edges here would be at most I. So this is, uh, at most i edges. Then SP of U is at most the length of this shortest path from V to U with at most i edges. And uh, where i is this uh, variable that we have here. So uh, again, what's the meaning of that? It means that essentially when we run this algorithm, when we, this i equal to one to v minus one, for any i, uh, so whenever we have like for any i, uh, it finds the shortest path that have uh, lengths here by lengths means the number of edges there are at most i. So when we run it i times, it finds the shortest path 
from V to U that uses at most I edges. It finds such a shortest path. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, I mean, prove it, see how does it work. So when I equal to zero, when we didn't, uh, do anything. So then this is the basic of, uh, this is the basis of induction. So for I equal to zero, what do we have? So we have SP of V equal to zero and SP of W is equal to infinity. So here in this case, uh, uh, of course, when there is no edge is used, the only, you can go only from V to V. So in that case, of course, the shortest path from V to V is zero and because there is a, Path of length, the only uh, vertex for which there is a path of uh, like the passes uh, in which we are using zero edges is V, then the basis of induction is correct. Now, uh, again, uh, what do we want to say? We want to say that when we run it I times this loop, when we run it I times, uh, so this is, so when we run it i times, then uh, in that case, it finds the shortest path that uses at most i edges. Uh, let's uh, assume by induction uh, that this is correct for i minus one. Now consider a vertex u such that uh, here there is a path, uh, consider a path from v to u that uses at most i edges. So, uh, and assume that the W is the last vertex before you. This graph, this can be directed graph. So consider the vertex W, which is just before <laughs> you. So uh, this is exactly the property that we have used before. So whenever you have a shortest path from U to V, then we know that uh, the any part of this path should be a shortest path, uh, shortest path between these two paths. In particular, because uh, between uh, here, uh, there is a path of uh, length V to U that use I edges, and this is the shortest path. So it means that here, the part from V to W, uh, that should be also the shortest path that it can use I minus one edges. This is from V to W. Good. Again, because uh, this is a, this is a, a here we have a shorter, um, shortest path that uses I edges from V to U. It means that there should be a, and then W is the one vertex before that. It means that this part from V to W, it should be the shortest path between uh, V to W that use I minus one edges. But by induction hypothesis, we know that when we run these loops i minus one times, it finds such a shortest path from v to w. Now, when we run it the i time, the last time, what do we do? We know that here we have the shortest path that uses i minus one edges from v to w. Then we are relaxing the edge wu. What's the meaning of relaxation? It means that uh, here, uh, like uh, it, it finds, uh, so uh, uh, this W can be any vertex here, but this guy tries for you. And if through any uh, W, you can, you can find uh, using I minus one edges, it can find a shorter path, then it updates it here when you relax that edge. So uh, this edge U essentially considers all things that are coming to that. For all these edges that are coming to you, we will see that if there is, this is the W prime and this is the W double prime, it says that if there is a path from V to any of these previous vertices that uses I minus one edges, and that is the shortest path between this guy that by induction we have it, then update U to be the shortest path among all these possibilities. That's exactly the proof that we have it here. Uh, does it make sense? Uh, 
Uh, good. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so this is a very simple algorithm that it uh, obtains. This one, we talk about the running time of this algorithm. Uh, no, uh, uh, why we are fine? Because, uh, no, uh, uh, why this algorithm when we are running it V minus one, we are done? Because we know that if there is no negative cycle, as I mentioned, if there's a negative cycle, you can just go to this negative cycle and you can just say this is a negative cycle. You can go there and then you can repeat there. So in that case, uh, between two vertices, the U and V and U, the length of the path actually, the number of edges can be infinite. However, if it is not the case, we know that uh, at the end, there should be some vertex, some path from V to U that use at most V minus one edges. And here, uh, wait a minute. So here we know that if we run this algorithm for V minus one times, then it finds all the shortest path or find the shortest path from V to U that use at most V minus one edges. And that's exactly the thing that we wanted. So uh, if there is no negative cycle in the graph, then we know that the shortest path from V to U uses at most V minus one edges. And by induction hypothesis, we know that if we are running this algorithm, if we are running this loop, uh, size of V minus one times, then we are finding the shortest path from V to U that uses at most V minus one edges. So we will find the shortest path for this, algorithm. And as I mentioned, this algorithm is actually a very useful uh, algorithm that has uh, applications in uh, routing, in routers, in the routing protocols, uh, when you are uh, sending packets on the internet. So that's a very nice algorithm. And uh, uh, good. And uh, one other interesting thing, if you are, uh, so if you want to also this algorithm, you can see whether there is a negative cycle in the graph or not. So uh, how can you do that? If you're uh, running this algorithm, instead of V times, if you are doing it, if you are uh, this loop, if you are doing it, if you, instead of go, uh, going from one to V, uh, size of V minus one, if you go from one to size of V, and if in the last iteration, so if in this iteration, a relaxation happens, then there is a Uh, then there is a negative cycle in the graph. So if you run this one, instead of i from one to size of v minus one, you run it from one to v. And in the last iteration, the vs iteration, if one relaxation happened, what's the meaning of relaxation happened? If you can find some uh, uh, essentially edge for which this is indeed less than this, and we will update it. If this happens, it means that there is a negative cycle in the negative cycle in the graph. Why? Because that's the only case that the shorter uh, shortest path for a vertex can have more than V minus one edges, as I mentioned, because in that case, you can go to a negative cycle and repeat. So that's the only case that you, the negative, uh, the shortest path from a vertex to another vertex can have size of V minus, more than size of V minus one edges. And because of the negative cycles, so if this happens in the last iteration, means the VS iterations, it means that there is a negative cycle in the graph. So this is the algorithm. This is a very nice one that also detects negative cycles. And negative cycles have lots of applications. You can see some in your assignments or, or in the book or other places. Uh, so for example, this is the CLRS book talks about a lot about the applications of negative cycles. Uh, 
So this algorithm is especially useful also to find negative cycles. Uh, great. So this was the third algorithm that we were talking about. So we talk about uh, three algorithm, uh, like three algorithm, all pair shortest path using Floyd Varshall, and then digester algorithms uh, that works only for non-negative weights, and the Bellman force that works as long as there is no uh, negative cycle. And as I mentioned, if there's a negative cycle in the graph, actually the concept of shortest path does not mean that much because you can go to this cycle and then just loop forever. Good. So these are the three famous algorithms for the shortest path. Now I want to talk about another algorithm. Uh, this is not about the shortest path, but uh, it is uh, somehow very important and very relevant algorithm. So let me uh, go to this one. Uh, Okay, uh, good. So the next problem that I want to talk about it is the problem which is called the minimum cost spanning tool. This is, or uh, MST. This is the algorithm that actually I have used even myself. I have done some wiring, et cetera. And that actually I use this algorithm to, uh, I mean, the cost was less for me because instead of two boxes of wires, I could just buy one, <laughs> box of wire from Home Depot. Uh, so uh, what is this problem? So this is the case that you have a set of uh, points and you want to just, uh, and say between any two of these guys, there is a distance between them. So between, I mean, there are some places you can think about like, for example, cities that there are some, uh, you want to build some uh, roads between them. Such that these cities become connected. All of them become essentially connected. Or you may think about these are like you want, to, these are some places that you want to put some wiring between them. And these are some kind of lights. And you want to use the minimum amount of uh, lights such that you can connect these guys together on a, on a ceiling or etc. So uh, again, so. Uh, this can be, I mean, there are, uh, so uh, what is the problem? The problem is this one. You are given an undirected connected weighted graph. So you are given an, un, uh, this is an undirected graph and it is connected and it is weights. And the weights on each edge say that the cost of uh, connecting these two vertices. So again, the weight between any two vertices is that what is the cost of connecting this? It can be like the cost of building a road between two cities, or it can be the cost of wire or the length of the wire that you are uh, using to connect uh, these uh, two vertices. And you want to say, minimize the total uh, amount of roads that are create, like you are building it or you are constructing it, or the total amount of wire that you want to buy such that you will uh, connect all vertices on the graph. So you are given an undirected connected weighted graph G and you want to find a spanning tree uh, that connects every vertex with minimum cost. So let's see, uh, okay. and this is the algorithm that I want to talk about. There are two algorithms here. One is, the, actually there are more than this. So there is a Kruskal algorithm so there's a Kruskal algorithm. There is, a, there is a Brovka. I think this is correct or something like this. So this is Brovka. Uh, uh, there are three algorithms, three famous algorithms for this one. This is a very fundamental problem uh, for graphs. And there are three algorithms. There's a Kruskal algorithm, Brovka algorithm, and Prim algorithm. Here, I want to talk more about, like talk about the Prim algorithm. And all of them are some kind of greedy algorithms. And we define the greedy algorithm before. These are the algorithms that they are choosing one edge or like they are doing some selection and they don't change the selection versus the backtracking algorithm that they may change their selection lay. So uh, here, uh, especially this prime algorithm is implementation is very similar to digester algorithms. 
and it gives you the ideas about the other algorithms like Kruskal and Kruskal as well. Uh, but uh, let's see what is the Prim's algorithm. This is a greedy algorithm. So uh, the, in, the implementation, as I mentioned, is very similar to Digest. So you are starting with some uh, vertex. So here you are, you want to connect all vertices. So you can start from any vertex. And in this case, uh, this uh, you can start from any vertex W. So here in this case, for example, W would be A. Then, uh, and then the uh, set of edges, you want to see also what are the set of edges in the graph. So uh, this is a, uh, you want to also say what are the set of edges in the graph. So you, what do you see? You will see that while, and the graph we are assuming it is connected. You say that why the v nu is not equal to the whole v. If this v nu is very similar to v k. If you remember in, from the digestive algorithm that they were the k nearest or k closest vertex to v. So here v nu is the set of edges, the set of vertices that we are adding one by one. And then we are adding each edge. When we add one vertex to v nu, also we say which edge on the tree should be used. So uh, what do we do? So we are starting from one vertex, say in this case, the vertex A. And then we will find one vertex. So here, essentially, this is the thing. So we are considering this one that has the W. And this is v nu at any time. We consider uh, the all edges between v nu and v minus v nu. So we will consider all edges in between. And among them, so among all edges that are from uh, like this um, set v nu, this, we will consider the, we will find the mean guy. So we will find the minimum uh, edge that goes from v nu to outside. And say this uh, essentially goes from, uh, uh, yes. So here it is the, say u is here, v is here. We are finding the minimum guy, say in this case becomes the uv. Then what do we do? Then we are adding v. Then we are adding this vertex V to the set, V nu. And then also we are adding this edge to the tree. So uh, this is the way that actually we are also finding a tree. By the way, uh, so this graph that I mentioned, when you want to find a minimum connected graph that connects all these vertices, even with weights, you should not have any cycles. Because if, as long as you have a cycle in this graph, then uh, it means that one of this edge, one of these edges, say the edge that has the maximum weight, can be deleted, and still this guy will be connected. So this graph does uh, these uh, things that we create would be a tree. It should not have any cycle, and because the graph is connected, would be essential. That's the reason that we call it a spanning tree. So it, it spans all vertices of the graph, uh, and uh, has the minimum weight. And this actually, if you want to do maximum weight, exactly the same algorithm is working. You just, if you want to find the maximum weight, you just, uh, the numbers that are given to you, you just put minus before them. So if the edge weights are, uh, it's a seven, then it becomes minus seven. Then you will find the minimum cost algorithm. This works even with the negative. So this algorithm works even with negative edges. So when you, if you want to find the maximum spanning tree, exactly you will just run this algorithm, but just negate all the weights and just run the uh, mean cost spanning tree algorithm. Okay, so in, in this case, again, so uh, you are uh, starting from some uh, vertex, then you are adding vertices um, one by one to this venue. And which edge we will add it to VNU, we will, uh, among all edges that are going from VNU to V minus VNU, find the edge that has the minimum length, say it is UV, then I will add V to this VNU, and then uh, the edge that comes from, and here we are creating some kind of a tree from W. 
So now, which edge uh, should I add it? U, V, I will add it, the tree. And in, uh, in some sense, U becomes actually the parent of V in this tree that we have. And then we will continue the same operation. So it is uh, very similar to uh, this uh, digestive algorithm. There also we were doing the same thing. So there, the only difference is that we were not adding the edge uh, that U, V is minimized. We will adding, we didn't add the vertex for which the UV is minimized. We were adding a, a vertex V such that SP of U plus weight of UV is minimized. So that's for that. We were doing this once at the, for digestive. So for digestion, we will find the minimum uh, SP, the shortest path to U plus the edge WV, UV. In Prim's algorithm, we don't care about this. We only want to find the vertex that has, that minimizes the weight of U to W. That's the only difference between this algorithm and uh, digestive algorithm. Uh, good. So uh, let's run these algorithms here for this case, see what, we, what do we get it? So uh, let's, uh, for example, we start here. So W originally has this is equal to A. So A would be, this guy would be the root of the tree. Now, uh, from A, what is the, uh, so from A to outside, what is the edge that has the minimum weight? There is five and seven. And say everything else which is not there is infinity. So here between five and seven, five is the minimum. So we will add this guy, D here, and then this would be the venue. So this, this is essentially the, let me we'll just create this edge. So this is the edge that we are at. Now, this is the venue. So this is the that venue. What about from venue to the rest of this? What is the edge that has the minimum length? In this case, actually, there is 7, 9, 15, and 6. So in that case, actually, this is the edge. So I will add this edge to the And then my venue uh, would be So now my venue would be all of these six. So that would be venue. And this is the tree that I have constructed. Now from A, D, and F, this is a venue. What is the shortest edge to outside? This would be actually the edge from A to B. Note that in this case, again, I am adding. A... So then in this case, A, B will be added. What is the length of that? The length of it is seven, and A becomes the parent of B. And again, I need to update uh, venue. So in this case, uh, venue would be contains all of these guys. Now again, what is the edge, the minimum edge that goes outside of venue? So in that case, we have eight, seven, 15, eight, and 11. Then in this case, seven guy would be the one. So again, we will add this guy. So we will add this guy. Here, the edge B, E will be added and B becomes the parent of E. So if you want to consider that the rooted tree, that would be something like this. this guy. And then I will, again, I will, uh, Erase and update venue. And again, see what is the edge that goes minimum that goes outside of this? It would be in this case uh, uh, the, the guy that goes uh, outside of uh, this. 
uh, would be uh, so we have eight, five, nine, and eleven. So in that case, actually, the one that goes out would be these five guys. So in that case, uh, E becomes the parent of C, and then uh, I need to again update the renew. So here, it venue has everything except this guy. And then what is the final guy that goes from venue to ref, which is nine and 11. So in that case, these guys would be the So this is the rooted things. And here, G becomes the parent of E. And here, in that case, the uh, we knew so we knew becomes all vertices in the graph. And so then this is the condition. So that while v new is not equal to v. In this case, v new is equal to v. So we found actually the shortest path, uh, the shortest like minimum cost spanning tree starting from a vertex. W, which is in this case A, to all other vertices. So this is the tree that uh, this kind of things that I have done is this kind of brownie things that I created. That's a minimum spanning tree for this one. You can check and see that this is actually, you cannot find any other connected graph with, with total lengths less than the one that we have found uh, for these things. And the total weight here would be, the total length here would be five plus seven, plus six, uh, plus seven, plus five, and plus nine. So that is the total length that we are paying for this minimum spanning tree. Is everything clear? Any questions? Good. So this is the Prim's algorithm. As I mentioned, there are two other algorithms, Kruskal and Brufka, that I, I mean, you can read about them. These are also famous, but this is one that I specifically, I wanted to say for this important problem because the implementation is actually very similar to, uh, Digester algorithm. So uh, this implementation is, as I mentioned, is very similar to Digester algorithm. So in the digester algorithm, as we discussed, uh, we considered uh, whenever we wanted to add a new vertex to the current set VK or V new, we wanted to find a vertex which has the mean of SP U plus W of UV. Here, we don't care about the, how much was the cost because it is as, as long as it is connected, we are fine. So to, we just find the vertex that minimizes the UV. So the implementation is exactly like that, the one that we had it for digestra. And here, actually, for we are again, you are using some mean heap algorithms. And uh, at any time, we are finding a vertex V, which is outside of V new, that has the minimum edge to this. The only difference, as I mentioned, so you consider the SP of U is equal to zero because as long as it is connected, we don't need to pay that. So just anywhere that is SP of U, just put it zero instead. Then the rest would be exactly the implementation that we had it for digester algorithms. Uh, and as we discussed, the running time of digester algorithm, if you remember, was order V plus order E times log of V, again. I mean by V means the size of it. But that was the running time of digestera. We have exactly the, the same running time for prim algorithm. And again, at each time we are finding this guy. And uh, one important thing is again, when you are adding a vertex V to W, what do we do? So we had some updates there. When you are adding a vertex V to W, uh, so, uh, so let me just mention it here. So here we have this new vertex that we are adding 
So let's say this is the run. So this is the venue. So we are adding a new vertex V. Now, uh, the only thing is that we have some estimate for the shortest edge to each of these guys. Now, we will say that if the edge from V to this guy, so for all edges V that we have to outside of to V new, if the, the current, uh, so to each of these guys, they have an estimate. What is the shortest edge? Uh, from V new to outside. Now, when I add V to this set, if uh, this edge V to U is less than the, the previous edge, I don't know, uh, maybe X to U, then I will replace this one. And I will say that the, now the minimum edge from V new to this guy would be the uh, edge from V to U. And in this case, I will mention also that uh, V is the guy, uh, who would be potentially the parent of U if I add U next time to Vinny. So uh, you, you can only, you can go to digester algorithm and just see the thing that we discussed there. It is exactly the same thing as I mentioned, SP of U would be zero. And anytime we are adding a vertex V to this guy, there we were uh, updating the estimated shortest path from this vertex W to this guy. Here we only uh, up, uh, we only update the estimated shortest edge from v new to v two uh, from v new to u. So in some sense we don't care about the length of this path anymore because as long as it is connected we don't know how we don't care how much was the length of this. Only we care the shortest path uh, shortest edge coming to you from Vini. So the rest of the implementation is exactly like that. And as I mentioned, the running time would be size of V plus size of uh, E times log of V. And that was actually the main reason that I wanted to talk about this particular algorithm because the running time is, uh, we have already discussed about the implementation of this when we talk about digest lag. Uh, great. Yeah, so uh, This was the, the summary is this the one that I have mentioned here actually, that at each stage, we can keep SE of E means the shortest edge to V instead of SP of V shortest path to V in the digestive algorithm, which is the, this keeps the minimum edge connecting V new from V new to a vertex V. And we update it each time that we add a new vertex to V new as we discussed. And the running time would be this. Now, why is it correct? Again, uh, this we are using this trick uh, for all greedy algorithms. Uh, it, generally, if some algorithm works for grid uh, by, a, by a greedy approach, then we should be able to prove it by induction. And we are proving here by induction as well. So we have seen induction a lot in all this all shortest path algorithms, as well as topological sort and others. So here, this is another example that we are using again induction. As we have seen in this class, we are uh, uh, using induction, not only to prove algorithm, in some sense to also design algorithm. And this is yet one another example of those type of algorithms designed by induction. Good. So uh, how do we prove it? This is the induction hypothesis. Again, we need to say what is the induction hypothesis. We want to say uh, there is always a best solution. Best solution means optimum solution, the one that has the minimum cost. That has the, has the first k edges that we are adding to ENU. Uh, ENU or the, whenever we are adding one vertex, the parent of that vertex to this vertex would be an edge that we will add it to ENU. 
edges that we have added to uh, minimum cost spanning tree. As we discussed when I ran that particular example. Good. So I want to say that there is always an uh, optimum algorithm, optimum solution. There might be several optimum solutions, but there is at least one optimum solution that has the first k edges that I, I have added to the solution. Now, uh, if I can prove this one, k is equal to n minus one. So I know that this, uh, uh, this tree that I'm creating has n minus one edges. And again, n is the size of the vertex. So I know that uh, when I run this algorithm, uh, n minus, uh, like uh, I will add n minus one edges to this because it would be a tree and the tree has n minus one edges. So if this induction hypothesis is correct for k equal to n minus one, it, it means that I'm done because in that case, the optimum would be the, uh, the optimum uh, would be exactly the same solution that I have uh, reduced using my algorithm. Okay, uh, so uh, what is the base case? The base case is again, uh, this one, that you have a vertex W and K is equal to uh, like uh, zero. Um, of course, uh, like if K is equal to <laughs> zero, it means that I have not added any edge. And I know that there is an optimum algorithm there is an optimum solution that connects every vertex to each other in the graph, including W. So, uh, and there is no edges here. So I am essentially done, trivially done. Okay, so uh, let's now consider uh, this case that, um, how do we prove that? Consider an, a, a tree optimum, say uh, that has only the first K edges of INU. So we have an optimum algorithm here that has the first k edges that we have selected. So we have some algorithm. Algorithm is or algorithm. Optimum is the best solution exists. I mean, we may not have access to that. We are talking about it existentially. And we, we try to somehow massage this optimum to become very similar to the solution that we are producing using our algorithm. So an uh, optimum is say producing a uh, solution opt and our algorithm produces something like sol. And we want to say opt and sol are very close to each other. So, so far we know that this is our uh, say the thing. So this is the venue. And say this is, we have started from some vertex W. And so far we know that uh, the first K edges that we have added, so these are the first K edges that we have added here. So these are the first K, uh, so these are the first First K edges that our algorithm essentially has selected. And we know that by induction hypothesis, this first K edges belonging, uh, so belonging to both uh, to uh, opt intersection so. So these are the first K edges that by induction hypothesis, this is, I will say, induction. So these edges that we have added so far, these are the V new. These are all edges that, uh, these are common between all algorithm and optimum solution. And this is by induction hypothesis. Now, what will happen in the next time? In next time, this is uh, like the next step essentially. Say 
draw this one. So let me actually raise this one. So this is V new. This is the set of uh, the V new, uh, the set that we discussed there. And this is V minus. I think these are the K edges that these are both belonging to us and to the optimum. Now, what will happen is this step. In this step, it might be the case. So the algorithm selects says this guy. Right, uh, this is from uh, say U to V. But what is the property of this UV? The property of U UV that it is essentially this is the minimum edge. So minimum edge in terms of weight uh, between. Actually, let me just. So here, this edge UV that we are adding by definition of the algorithm is the minimum edge between V new and V minus V new. That's by definition. However, it turns out that the optimum, the optimum solution does not have this particular edge. Good. So optimum does not have this particular optimum. There is an optimum algorithm that does not have uh, does not have this edge. And we want to say that actually, if there is a case, there should be another optimum algorithm that contains this U and V. And if it is the case, then this algorithm, this new opt, we will call it opt prime, uh, has one more edge common with us, and that proves the induction hypothesis for k plus one, and we are done. So uh, assume that this particular edge UV that we are adding now, it's not belonging to optimum. So good. So optimum, as we discussed, optimum has, a, say, I will consider, let me draw it with another color. This is, so optimum has all these guys, all these K guys, but it does not contain this. Good. So. Let's consider uh, this uh, and say optimum is uh, first. One other thing, it is important that optimum also sh should connect V new to something outside of V minus V. New. But let's consider this edge UV, and we are adding this one. Do this one. Consider this add a, a UV and add this one. So this is a. Let, let me just mention here that. Uh, so this is the optimum. The optimum is this one, and then here this is our solution. The solutions are those edges which are red, and this one are green or the optimum. We know that this edge UV does not belong to optimum. But say, let's add this edge UV to the optimum. See what will happen. We know that the optimum, the current optimum, uh, has n minus one edges. If we add one more edge to it, then it should have a cycle. That's by definition, because a tree can have at most n minus one edges. And n is the size of number of vertices of V. So. Consider this cycle that optimum uh, creates here. So this edge plus the optimum, and optimum was the this guy. So uh, good. Now, if you consider optimum and this guy, then they form a cycle. So we knew that optimum contains all these uh, guys as well, the edges that we have selected, the first K edges. 
And we know that in this cycle, because U is inside V new and V is not inside V new, this cycle should cross not only one time from V new to V minus V new, but it should essentially cross us twice because it is a cycle. So there should be one more edge here that in the optimum that goes from V new to V minus V new. And say so this is this other uh, edge that I have added here. So uh, when we are adding again, we are adding this uh, edge UV to the optimum. And then we form a cycle. And we know that in this cycle, there should be another edge from V new to outside of V new. Now let's see what will happen if I just uh, delete this edge. So, uh, okay, what do I know? I know say this edge is between U prime and V prime. By the definition of algorithm, I know that the length of uv is less than the length of u prime v prime. Correct? That's by definition. Because uv was less than, the length of uv was less than length of u prime v prime. That was the definition of uh, essentially this edge uv. And that was the way that all algorithm is selecting it. What's the meaning of that? It means that the length of uv should be less than or equal to length of u prime v prime. Now, what do I do? I will consider the optimum. This was a cycle. So I will just delete this edge. So uh, let me just delete it again. So this was, I think. So this one was here and this one was there. Yes. Okay. So I delete the edge u prime v prime, and then instead I will add this edge to the optimum u v. Now, because it was a cycle, so I can. I mean, when there is a cycle, I can add. I could have a, suppose this one essentially the edge that I have deleted. Yeah. Sorry, like it keeps me awake. Yeah. Yeah, Good. So here, instead of this U prime V prime, I have added the edge U V. What did happen? The uh, first, I mean, still I have it. Uh, still, this is the solution. This is the optimum uh, connects all vertices because there was a cycle. Instead of one edge of the cycle, I put another. Instead of U prime V prime, I put UV. So still it connects all vertices. And the cost of that, it could go only down because I knew that UV is less than U prime V prime by the definition of the algorithm. So I found from, so from opt, I could actually get uh, another solution that I will call it opt prime. Opt prime length is less than or equal to opt. And of course, because opt was minimum, it means that the opt prime should be equal to opt. So it means that there is another optimum algorithm that has one more edge common with me. And this one more edge is the edge UV. And I'm done. So again, so that was the idea that we consider some kinds of opt. We say that it has k edges common with me. And then I will consider the, uh, the edge uv, the k plus one uh, edge that my algorithm adds to that. And I will say that if this edge uh, does not belong to the optimum, I can actually add this edge and the cost will not go up. So still, it means that there is another optimum algorithm, optimum solution that has this other edge common with me, which 
it means that there is another optimum algorithm that has k plus one h common with me, and that proves the induction hypothesis. And again, when k becomes n minus one, it means that opt algorithm and uh, my algorithm, they produces the same solution. So my solution should be optimum as well. And that's it. So that's actually was a nice greedy algorithm that works here. Yeah. Good. So uh, any questions? Uh, great. So this algorithm that we have mentioned, uh, interestingly, this algorithm that we discussed for the minimum spanning tree uh, and the one that finds essentially we are given a graph and then it finds a solution, a tree for you. This algorithm works for undirected graphs. Good. So uh, this shortest path algorithm that we discussed, they were working for directed or undirected graphs. Generally, directed graphs are more uh, general than undirected graphs. Uh, because as I mentioned, whenever we have edge UV, which is undirected, generally we can just replace it with two edges like this. And if there is some cost C here, we can put the cost C here. So uh, directed graphs are more general than undirected graphs. And this algorithm that we discussed for a uh, minimum spanning tree actually works when the graph is undirected. If the graph becomes directed and you want to find, it is essentially a tree that connects in this way. So there should be some tree that connects vertex, say W to all other vertices, and it should be in a directed sense. This problem actually is MP complete or MP hard. So here I just want to give a very brief uh, discussion about the uh, uh, MP-complete versus MP-hard. Let me uh, just raise this one. Good. So uh, let's just give some ideas about MP completeness. So here we are talking about easy and hard problems. Good. So. In some sense, uh, uh, we want to decide which problems are easy, which problems are hard. Generally, we say that a problem is easy if there is an algorithm whose running time is polynomial in N. As I mentioned, always there is some input N, some parameter N in the input. That is the most important things. Sometimes there is N and M. You can consider N plus M as the parameter that we are considering. So this algorithm that we can run them in the uh, some um, running time, which are polynomial in N for some constant K. So K is some constant. So K is constant. And these algorithms are polynomial time algorithms. So almost uh, all algorithms that we have seen in this class are this type of algorithms. These are n to the k for some constant k, and these are polynomial time algorithms. These are the algorithms that we will call, consider them easy algorithms. What's the meaning of easy? It means that uh, we can solve them in polynomial. However, uh, there are some problems that for them, uh, we don't know any polynomial time algorithm. Actually, there are lots of algorithms, uh, lots of problems like this. 
for which we don't know whether there exist the polynomial time algorithms or not. And generally the best way to solve these problems as of now is to try all possibilities. Uh, try all possibilities, I mean, generally the running time of these algorithms would be something like order two to the n or n factorial. So we talk about two of these problems when we talk about the dynamic uh, approach, dynamic programming and greedy and backtracking. In particular, if you remember was the bean packing problem, So what was the bin packing problem? You had a set of items, each of them had some size, and you want to put them in the minimum number of bags or number of bins. So this is the minimum number of bins. Minimum number of bins. So you wanted to put these guys to the minimum number of bins. We talk about some approximation algorithms there. If you remember, it was two approximation algorithms. For this problem, if you have this kind of thing, you want to find the minimum number of pins, actually the best way is to just try all possibilities. I mean, say if I have K pins, each of these uh, guys say for any K, if I have K pins, I can say each of them can go to any of these places and then see whether I can put all of them into K pins. So I, and I will find the minimum K that is, is, is possible. So for each K, I mean, K, of course, it can be if the number of these items is N. If, uh, again, this one, the beans had size one and all of these items had size less than one. So these are the items that we wanted to put it into some beans. And you could put a, a few items into one bin as long as the total size of these guys is less than the size of the bin, which is one. So this problem, it is called was bin packing. If you remember, we had some approximation algorithm that was the, uh, this was uh, a simple greedy algorithm that any item, put it in the first bin that you can actually, if you put it there, it does not violate its capacity. If there is no such bin, open a new bin. This was the algorithm that we discussed and we mentioned that this is a two approximation algorithm for this problem, bin packing. This algorithm is the NP-hard problem. It means that we don't know any polynomial time algorithm for that that finds the minimum number of pins in polynomial time. You can do it some kinds of algorithm like this, uh, exponential in N, that you just consider any K, K can be between Z, K can be between, uh, so K is between one and N. So K between one and N, you try to find the, uh, like uh, try all possibilities and see whether these n items can you put them essentially in these k bins. How can you do that? For each item, consider all possibility goes to one of these bins and see any of them, any of these ways is uh, uh, feasible in the sense that if these guys are going to here and these guys are going to here and these guys are going there, then uh, all the bins. Uh, uh, sizes are not violated. So this was a bin packing problem. For this, there is no algorithm. I mean, we don't know any algorithm which in polynomial time can solve the problem. And there are lots of these problems. This is the class of uh, NP uh, or NP, actually not NP. The correct one is NP hard or NP uh, so this bin packing actually is an NP hard problem. So bin packing. So bin packing is NP hard. It means that for now we don't have any polynomial time algorithm. So. Uh, you can see actually NP in some sense, when we talk about NP hard or NP complete, it has some, you, some people consider it as non-polynomial. The actual thing is not like that, is not non-polynomial. It's actually, it, it, is, it is not a negative thing. It is a positive thing. He said that this algorithm is non-deterministic polynomial. 
So in some sense, it is actually a positive thing. This is a is a polynomial time algorithm, but not the one that we like it, or at least the best way that we like it. So this class of uh, problems that are easy means polynomial time algorithm, and we have seen lots of them in this class. We can solve them in polynomial time. There is a large set of problems involving lots of practical problems uh, for which uh, we don't know any polynomial time algorithm as of now. And we have some approximation algorithm that we have seen, for example, for bin backing for potentially to cope with their hardness, but there is no polynomial time algorithm. This is the class of MP hard or MP complete problems. And to just give you some ideas that what are these problems? So why do we say non-deterministic polynomial? So sometime instead of for this kind of NP, the class, NP, we are using, you can use it VP. VP means verifiable in polynomial time. So VP means ver verifiable in polynomial time. So what is the idea here? The idea is that this problem, this MP complete problems or the, the people, MP complete or MP hard are the problems which are still verifiable in polynomial time. What's the meaning of that? It means that if somebody gives you a solution, then you can tell me whether this solution is correct or not. However, I cannot find the solution myself. So this is in some sense, it is some kind of philosophical question. The NP hard problems and uh, like poly and polynomial time algorithms. So the main open problem that we have it, whether this class like NP or NP complete or NP hard can we solve them also in polynomial time? So as I mentioned, for this class NP, generally, if somebody gives me the solution, I can verify in polynomial time which is a solution or not. But I cannot find that solution in polynomial time as of now. This is a very important problem, probably the most important problem in computer science, and I will say even in math. And with the, the fact that we can check the solution in polynomial time means that we can find the solution in polynomial time as well or not. We don't know the answer as of now. And that's a big open problem. Either way, if you say that there are some, these problems cannot be solved in polynomial time or say that actually you can solve this problem in polynomial time. And there are lots of awards. This is like the play. This is one of these famous $1 million millennium price by Clay Institute, but nowadays it actually is worth, I will say, billions, not a million if you solve this problem. This is the, like, if you want to be super famous, essentially, that's the one that you want to solve this, I will say, you want to be Einstein, that's a problem that you need to solve. It's a very hard problem, we don't know the answer, uh, and, uh, and it is, as I mentioned, some kind of philosophical things. So what's the meaning of that? It means that, in some sense, for polynomial time algorithm, you can think about uh, a person who is essentially the artist, can draw any paintings. Here, for the MP or MP complete, you can think about a person who, when see an art, it can say whether it is a good art, whether it's a genuine art or not. He's very good at that one. But if that person is a good artist, himself or herself. So uh, it may or may, may not be the case. That's exactly similar to this problem with our NP or MP complete or NP hard. They can be solvable in polynomial time or maybe not. So in that sense, this is the question of a person who can understand the art and say this is a genuine art, whether that person can be a good artist or not, is the same problem that we have it, whether NP, NP, problems or MP hard problems or MP complete problems can be solved in polynomial. So that's the whole idea of uh, this is a very big open problem and we don't have any clue for that. <clears throat> Maybe, I don't know, uh, when we discussed this one around 60 years ago, the people were really thinking that we will solve this problem in the next 10, 20 years. But I think at this time, I don't estimate that anyone can solve this problem in the next 100 years, at least, if not more. Again, I will be very happy if 
I'm mistaken, but that's my current thing. This is a very hard problem. And anyhow, so yeah, that's a, some introduction into MP completeness and MP hardness and why we have such a, a set of uh, problems that unfortunately lots of uh, practical problems are in this class of uh, NP. Uh, okay, uh, thanks everyone and uh, talk to you and see you next time. Bye for now.